not every e-commerce business owner's dream to show up number one on Google. Ranking first in search engines can get you up to 30% more daily traffic. So that would mean more people coming to your online store and making purchases. And the best part is, is that you could rank number one for free. So in today's video, we're going to teach you how to harness the power of SEO. This is going to be your golden ticket to improving your Shopify store rank on search engines so that you can make more sales. What's going on guys? My name is Michelle. I'm a creative strategist and I am also your host for today's video. Now, if you've just stumbled upon this channel, Learn with Shopify is a channel that is dedicated to helping you start, run and grow your online business. Now, I know as entrepreneurs, it can definitely be tough to find answers to your questions, especially if you are working alone. So we're constantly making videos that are going to give you the answers that you need to grow your e-commerce store. So if you do have a topic, that you need help with, make sure that you're leaving it in the comment section. Um, for example, we recently had someone ask how to reach out to influencers. So we just made an entire video just on that, just answering that question. So we definitely listen to you guys and we want to make sure that you are getting the most value possible. Um, so leave your topic suggestions down below. And if you like our content, make sure that you are hitting subscribe and you are liking this video. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So there's this joke in the SEO world. It goes, if you wanted to hide a dead body, you'd put it on the second page of Google. That's because the first page gets the most clicks and no one really goes to the second page, let alone the third or the fourth. Now, no matter what you're selling, where you are in the world or how new you are to selling online, getting your store ranked number one on Google is possible. It just takes time and persistence. To rank first in a Google search result, your store's content needs to match a potential visitor's intent. Search engine optimization are the steps that you would take to prove to Google that your content is relevant and that your site is worth visiting. So there are three types of SEO. There is technical SEO, on-page SEO, and off-page SEO. Getting all three of these aspects to move in harmony is the key to ranking your e-commerce store in search engines. So if we take a look at what technical SEO is, technical SEO ensures that your website is optimized for search engine crawlers, mobile devices, and has good page speed. It also optimizes your site for humans by making sure that its structure, navigation, and internal links allow for easy browsing. So on-page SEO is the primary method of directly telling readers and search engines what your page is all about. So this is going to include keywords, topic relevance, meta information, the slug in the page URL, and your images. So with off-page SEO, essentially it boils down to building backlinks. So these are links that point to your site. So the more high quality relevant backlinks that you have, the better your pages will rank. So what happens when you take steps to improve your SEO? The result is that you improve the quality and the quantity of people coming to your store. So once Google sees that your online store is a good experience for shoppers, they will bump you up higher and closer to that number one page. So this takes a little bit of time and a little bit of effort on your part, but SEO is a marketing channel that can produce the highest traffic and revenue for your business. So I'm going to introduce you to some simple steps that you can take right now today in order to get you closer to that number one spot. Keywords. So you might've heard of keywords before, but what are they actually? The best way to think of keywords are the queries that people use and type into search engines. Keywords are literally the words that you put onto your site so that when someone is searching for something in Google, they find you because you have included keywords that relate to their search. So you can build keywords into your page content, meta description, title tags, URL, and more. Now, one thing to remember is that SEO has come a long way since the days of keyword stuffing. So when optimizing pages to rank for keywords, the first step is to try and understand the topic behind it and then you do your best to cover that topic. So for example, when I search for silk sleep mask in Google, 
this e-commerce store shows up because they have used the keywords silk and sleep mask in their product descriptions. The trick though is to find the right keywords. The right keywords are gonna have a lot of people searching for them, but not a lot of other websites that are using these keywords. So in short, we want high volume, low competition. To go ahead and find those keywords, you're gonna to need to use a tool called Google Keyword Planner. So if you haven't set that up yet, I will just leave a link for you guys in the description box on how you can get that set up. So now I'm in Google Keyword Planner and I'm gonna be looking for words for my hot sauce brand. Specifically, I'm going to be looking for transactional keywords, which are searches that indicate an intent to complete a purchase. This entails typing a product name directly into the search bar, and these type of keywords go into your product pages. So I will click discover new keywords, and I'm gonna start typing in some keywords that I think people are gonna be searching on Google, and I'm gonna really think about the words that people might use if they are ready to make a purchase. So here I have Hot Sauce Canada, I have Hot Sauce Subscription Box, and I will also use Vegan Hot Sauce, which is actually quite ridiculous because I think most hot sauces are vegan, but that's fine. So you can put in up to 10 keywords, but right now we're just gonna hit get results. Okay, so here we have Hot Sauce Canada. And as you can see, it has 1,000 to 10,000 monthly searches. So that's pretty amazing. But my only thing here is that the competition is looking pretty high. That means we're probably not gonna rank for this search term. So you wanna look for a high average monthly searches with a low competition. That is a sweet spot. And if we scroll down, Google is gonna give us some other keywords as well. And these are gonna be keywords that are related to our initial search. And that's just gonna help us give us some more ideas. So as you're doing your research, here are some rules of thumb. Number one, go for keywords with more than a thousand monthly searches. Number two, if your search term has too high competition, think of synonyms. So instead of hot sauce, maybe we could do something like chili sauce. And number three, try to go for something that's called long tail keywords. Long tail keyword phrases will be easier to rank for. So instead of just like hot sauce, for example, you could use gluten-free hot sauce for sandwiches. And number four, include many keyword phrases, not just one. Okay, so let's say you found your keywords. What you're gonna wanna do is you'll put them on a notepad in your computer, and then you'll actually wanna put these keywords that you found onto your site. So here we are on my left-hand side, I have my keywords I wanna use, and on my right-hand side, I'm editing my product here in Shopify. So make sure that you're using your keywords in your product titles as well as your descriptions. I'm gonna make sure that all of these keywords are weaved in, in a way that makes sense. We wanna avoid keyword stuffing. So if you haven't heard of keyword stuffing, this is basically when you're just, you know, randomly plopping in keywords and when you read it out loud, the paragraph just doesn't make sense. We wanna avoid keyword stuffing because Google actually picks up on this and they will penalize your website. So make sure that your paragraph is readable and that it's providing value as well. Another place to add your keywords is in your image alt text. So if you want your actual images to show up when someone is doing a Google image search, your image alt text is how you're gonna get found. So I'll just add that here and I will click save alt text. All right, so let's scroll down a little bit. So this is a little preview of how our product page looks to other people when they find us on Google. So this is looking super messy. So let's just clean this up and we'll also take this opportunity to add in our keywords. You also wanna make sure that you're using copy that will entice people to click through once they actually find you on Google. And really short and sweet here is perfect. I'm gonna also include our keywords in our URL because Google also takes this into account. One other type of keyword that I briefly wanna mention is informational queries. So these types of keywords normally begin with how to, what, why, best, etc. So you can use these types of keywords to create blog content that genuinely provides helpful information that is also relevant to your target audience. So when it comes to the customer journey in search engines, it's important to understand how people move from not knowing what they wanna purchase or what they're looking for to confidently making the choice to purchase your product. 
Users look for information before they make a transaction. If you were looking to buy a new smartphone, for example, you would probably start your search by typing in a query like best smartphone. And then you might be scrolling through an article that lists the top 10 smartphones. From there, you would probably want to compare two of the products that you saw on that list to learn how they might compare in features or reliability. Okay, so from there, you might type in something like Apple iPhone versus Samsung Galaxy. And then after reading this, you would have a clearer idea of what smartphone is right for you. And then you would type in a transactional keyword like buy iPhone. And that way you could find the best deal and complete your purchase. Okay, so now that we understand how a customer might move from consideration all the way to purchase as they're using a search engine, you're gonna wanna replicate this. So to do this, you're gonna to want to create a list of informational keywords related to your niche or your product. You'll wanna brainstorm customer questions as well. Consider what questions customers are asking when they're aware of your product, but maybe they still need more clarification. So for example, we could create an article that helps customers understand how to pair certain hot sauces with certain foods, going back to our hot sauce example. So I would recommend that you start typing into Google, see what suggestions come up, and that's gonna give you an idea of common questions people are having. So after that, you're gonna to wanna to hit enter on one of the queries and scroll all the way to the bottom. This is a bit of life hack, and this will give you related queries. These will give you article ideas that are validated because you know people are searching for them. All right, so once you have your keywords, the next step is to create thoughtful and value-packed blog articles with original photos that help drive visitors from awareness to consideration, to transaction. Remember that funnel that we were talking about? We wanna move them through that with our content. So for this, consider making step-by-step -step tutorials. You can also try top 10 lists. You can do how-to articles. You can make long-form content and how-to videos. If you wanna rank higher in search results and maybe you're looking for a checklist that you can easily reference, then I will leave a link for you guys in the description box and that will give you access to download a free checklist on search engine optimization. Link building. So you're also gonna to wanna to think about a link building strategy. So link building refers to the process of acquiring hyperlinks from other websites to point to your own website. So if Google sees that other websites are pointing to your store, other people are talking about you, Google is gonna to start to see your site as trusted and reputable. Google takes into account the number of links that are out there about your store. It also considers the quality as well. So if Time Magazine drops your URL in their article, that would definitely be considered a reputable and high quality reference. Relevancy is also another key factor. If you do wanna get started on building links, the best way to approach this is to focus on partnerships. So whether that's publishers or other sites in your industry, you're gonna to wanna to determine who can provide and share value with. So if you know someone who reviews hot sauces and you wanna promote your hot sauce products, a really simple email introduction can be the start of a mutually beneficial relationship. When you're reaching out, here are a couple of things that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind. So in your pitch email, start by explaining what's in it for them. Let's say they have a blog post and they have links to products that are out of date or products that no longer exist, or maybe they're missing something vital in their post, you're gonna to wanna to give them a reason to consider your request, to consider featuring your products in their content. Secondly, make sure that you're not requesting links from people who are your competitors. Okay, this might sound obvious, but it's sometimes it's not so obvious. So for example, let's say you're, you're selling hot sauces. Make sure that you're looking at who is writing the actual article of, you know, top 10 hot sauces. Make sure that those people are not also selling their own hot sauces. That's just something to keep in mind so that you're not wasting your time. Number one, foundational links. So foundational links are from social media profiles, business directories, and niche directories. So if you haven't already signed up for social media accounts like Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, et cetera, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to do that now. And it's also recommended that you create a profile for Google My Business. Even if you don't have a physical retail store, this is still gonna help you improve your local SEO. 
which can help you get more local customers. The SEO benefits here are on the smaller side, on you know the foundational links, but this is easy to set up and it's gonna increase your discoverability. Number two, pitch gift guides. So gift guides are a list of recommended products, typically surrounding a holiday like Christmas, for example. Um, if you've ever Googled gift ideas, then you've likely come across one of these articles. So getting your products in the right gift guides can increase your sales, they can increase your traffic to your website as well, but inclusion in these does not happen randomly. It is gonna require some effort on your part. You'll need to contact gift guide publishers and ask to have your product listed. Now, of course, when it comes to this, there is no guarantee, but if your product is the right fit, you can be included and that can help you introduce your brand and your products to an entirely new audience. Number three, PR campaigns. So press publications have a really good chance at getting you website visitors and also establishing clout. This is all good things coming from an SEO perspective. So when we think about a press release, we're generally thinking about it in a very traditional sense where you would submit a release to the media to get featured in local, national, or industry press. But instead of hiring a PR company, because that can be pretty costly, try taking a shot at doing your own publicity. So if you have a great story or if you have a super interesting product that people are gonna wanna write about, just put it out there. Get in touch with bloggers and journalists who cover businesses like yours and tell them what you're up to. It's definitely true that most writers are drowning in requests, but they are still always on the lookout for a good story. So make sure that you're targeting the right publications and that you're sharing your brand's story, especially if it is you know, compelling, touching, shocking, or inspiring. Telling a narrative will improve your success rate with this tactic. Site speed. Having a fast site is not only important to keep customers from getting frustrated and leaving your site, but it's also important because Google sees this as favorable. Google will reward you with increased exposure and get you closer to that number one ranking if you do have good site speed. One of the most common offenders are apps on your Shopify store. So start by going to your apps, start by you know just cleaning up the ones that you don't use. And just by doing this small step, you're gonna see a huge difference in your site speed. Video is so important in keeping your customers engaged and on your site for longer. Long sessions will increase your site's SEO performance, but ironically, having a heavy video is gonna slow down your site speed and that's gonna negatively affect your SEO ranking. So to solve this little conundrum, instead of using iframe, which is YouTube standard embed code, use something called light embeds. This is gonna help with load times and it's gonna make your site load faster. So for personalized recommendations on how you can increase your site speed, Shopify actually has a tool that's right inside the admin called the store speed report. So you can check that out. Quality content. So Google tracks how people are interacting with your site. So if people land on your site, maybe they don't find what they want or maybe your site's looking amateur, they're probably gonna press the back button. If Google sees that people are leaving right away, they will move you down in ranks. So instead, create content that is keeping people engaged and Google is gonna uprank you for this. When it comes to your homepage, keep it short and snappy. So instead of opening with two long paragraphs that explain why your brand is the best, open with a product image, open with a short line of copy, and open with a button like Shop Now to entice people to browse and stay a while. So on our hot sauce store, we have beautiful photography, some teaser text, and a shop now button. This is a very standard way to set up your homepage. On your product pages, make sure that you have high res images and also include specific information that a customer would need to know before they actually make a purchase. So for example, here we have ingredients and spice level. Quality product pages are not only gonna help with SEO, but they're also gonna help with conversions as well. So make sure that you are paying close attention to your product pages. We actually have an entire video of me just going over Shopify stores that I think are doing an amazing job. So you can check that out right here for when you're done watching this video. So these are all the steps that you can take today if you wanted to, and that will help you improve your presence on Google. But when you implement these steps, you're gonna to wanna to use a tool like Google Search Console. Google Search Console is gonna help you track how well you're doing. So if you don't know how to use Google Search Console and maybe you want an entire video just on how to use it, 
let me know and I will do that if there is enough interest. If you're already watching this and you're wanting to improve your store, then you are 10 steps ahead of the game. The most common traits of successful entrepreneurs are people who are passionate, persistent, and keeps their eye on the goal. So good job for being out there and taking yet another step in pushing your business and getting closer to financial freedom. If you're not on Shopify already and you are serious about ranking your online store, then Shopify is really gonna have everything that you need. It has powerful features and free apps that's gonna simplify your marketing and up your game with SEO. So you can get started with a free 14 day trial, no credit card required. I will leave a link for you guys in the description box so that you can get started on your business journey. If you thought that this video was helpful, maybe you gained a couple of gems, make sure that you're giving it a thumbs up. That's gonna help this video do well, give it some more exposure. It's gonna help our channel grow and it's gonna overall help our community grow. And make sure that you are leaving your questions in the comment section. We will do our best to get back to each and every single one of you. And of course, if you like this type of content, if you are an entrepreneur and you're looking to up your game, make sure that you're hitting subscribe because we are constantly dropping content just like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Michelle and I will see you in the next one. Bye.